Hello and welcome to the blue supermoon at the end of August in 2023. I know I'm a couple days late, but I was also out in the middle of wilderness, as you should be on a full moon, especially with one of this significance. And this is a very intense and potent energy we're going to be coming into. It has... A lot going on with it but the real energy is that it's calling a council together what that council is and what it all means well we're gonna get into that so with further without further ado let us get go and call on the directions To the east, to the wind, the dragon's wing, to all the things that fly, soar, and glide through the sky, to the endless pursuit of knowledge, that freedom of movement, that endlessness of being, call and welcome you in. to the south, to the dragon's flame, to the endless fuel that burns in our souls, to the light that shines brightly around us, guiding us so we may see in the dark, to the passion of creativity, to the destructive chaos of wildfires and volcanoes, that come to clear and cleanse the lands. We come and we welcome you in. To the west, to the earth, beneath our feet, our grounded mother, our provider, who brings forth all living things, all the plant people, the earth stone people, the Four-leggeds and two-leggeds and multi-leggeds, the insects, great and small, to the largest of elephants, tallest of giraffes, to the strongest of bulls, boars, bears, we all welcome you in. And to the north to the waves of the ocean, to the endless vastness of emotion and wisdom, to the deepest depths of our being, to the lifeblood that gives everything the ability to live and breathe and be. And all the creatures of the seas, rivers, oceans, ponds and streams, we welcome you in. Now, what really makes this energy interesting is this council, this calling in, is calling in of the energies of the self, of those around us, recognizing who the people who surround us are, their purposes, their meanings, what they're here to accomplish and master. Now, the, what's being called in are these mastered archetypes. These are the beings who have achieved themselves through some form of mastery. Be it the hermit, the one who secludes themselves from everyone to, to achieve enlightenment the prophet who was guided upon by a divine source to lead themselves and others to a point of self-mastery. You have the alchemist who becomes the master of the world around it through trial and error. You have the witches and warlocks who have their knowledge and wisdom passed down through generations and generations and generations and teachings and lessons. You have the wizards who go 
and they study a specific form of that mastery and they do it to the point where no one else can achieve what they've achieved. You have the shamans who have balanced themselves with nature and become a master through that. You have the sorcerers whose bloodlines either a direct potent like lineage that's being brought down from generation to generation to those who've lost that connection and it spontaneously come like erupts from us as we achieve a sense of self. You have the tricksters, both the primal and divine, who come in to cause a little bit of chaos because they know that chaos brings the change that leads one into self-mastery. We have the ETs, the extraterrestrials, the unknowns, those who have come and gone. They have lived on this realm and this plane and no longer need to be here, but their mastery of this planet is what has allowed them to move on and a master the unknown. We have the priests, those who have mastered themselves through faith and belief. And whatever that faith is has granted them the power that they have. And then lastly is the ascended self, the one who has brought together all of these individual pieces of themselves so that they are no longer a fractured soul, but a full, whole being. With that being said, we are going to start and put on the singular masters, the one where there's usually only one of these per group, per area, per council, because through either being risen to the seat of power through status or acknowledgement of others or because well in some groups having more than one of these things is a little bit much to deal with and with that being said first we are bringing in the alchemist represented by cinnabar cinnabar is known as the alchemist stone because it is believed to turn into gold also has a Persian origin in dragon's blood. This is something to, that was believed because of the mercury. It had alchemical properties and could turn lead into gold. And as it connects to accepting that, that everything exists perfectly as it is, it's a stone of abundance that can increase both wealth and income. It's very energetic, increasing persuasiveness and assertiveness, allowing one to really push through the limits of the self by looking in the directions that no one else is willing to look. Next, we go to the witch. Represented by obsidian. And this being silver sheen obsidian now obsidian is a seer stone and with a with no limitations and no structure therefore it can cut through to anything you wish wish to find or what's holding you back and this obsidian representing the witch being singular because in every coven there is a supreme there is one who is higher than the rest due to being the one who formed the coven or they're the one who attracted all the others around them. And they are also the one who is able to relay and spread that information to those within their group, which is outside of the council proper. Next, we go over to the prophecy stone. This is a pseudomorphic meteorite 
the prophet is one who is granted divinity or mastery through divinity as they have, are as they become able to see and foretell the future as it's going to come they must master themselves to not let that future and that prophecy overtake them and drag them down and prophecy stones they help to ground the light into the physical body they draw the crown down to the feet filling the whole body before pushing it down to the earth star so this takes all of that divine self brings it through to the whole being so it's like you must be whole in order to become a prophet this has and with the prophet, they are not just a singular and well yeah. They have access to information. And they teach that you do not seek transcendence, but only to transfigure one's own destiny. Because the only one that can change things in your life or that says what you're destined to or you're fated to, that's you. We've created that, and the prophet knows that. And the prophet's the one who usually brings everybody together for they are the one who is sought the witches and warlocks are ones who seek they're constantly looking for deeper knowledge and meaning within themselves and the world around them yes. where cinnabar is just the mad genius they have the knowledge they're just going to find it grab it and take it wherever they can see what they can do with it next we have the hermit represented by candle quartz and candle quartz is what acts like a light in the darkness it's a light bringer for the planet guiding those incarnated to change the earth's vibration and the, the hermit is one who secludes themselves to find their mastery, to find their true power and purpose. That is the sage, the Buddha. Um, and that it helps to highlight the soul's purpose and focus on this life's purpose. Healing the heart, dissipating oppression and despair, creating tranquility and confidence. Just as all hermits do, by secluding themselves because the stresses and the pressures of the world around them make it so that they are become sought out but they don't wish to be sought out because they have a tendency to have people turn religions about them and that's not what they want they just want to be left alone in their mastery but their wisdom and knowledge is significantly important. Next, we're going to place down the connections to the ones who are dueled. And these dual energies are kind of self-explanatory once you get to understand where they come from or who's making them because the first and foremost being the most obvious would be the shaman because with the shaman you have both the masculine and the feminine the medicine woman and the medicine man these are both those who have found mastery through nature and devotion to the reverence of that nature. And these moji stones are very grounding, especially doing very potent metaphysical spiritual work, which is what a lot of shamans do. You want to talk about going deep within? Shamans are who do that does that you would work with them in pairs you have the feminine smooth and round and the masculine oblong misshapen a little bit rougher around the edges and the shamans 
are the healers in a lot of tribal cultures. They are the ones who people go to for knowledge and information and teachings because they're there and available. And they are only, and to become a shaman is usually to be selected by the current one to go into training. And back in the old days, they would go through, do vision quests and various lodge ceremonies. And the natives also did things like sun dances and the Norse, they would go out into the wilderness and they would either come back a warrior or enlightened. And it's a <laughs> different shift depending on which way you end up going. Next, we are going into the sorcerer. These are those whose bloodline has given them their power and their pathway to their mastery. And these are split into two because you have the bloodline, which are those whose family knows their connection and has taught it through each generation, time after time after time to instill these teachings so they don't get forgotten and we don't they don't lose who they are where on the other half you have the wild sorcerer one whose family line was either killed before the teachings were able to move forward or they've been separated from that family for generations after generations but there's still that potent magic left inside of them that can kind of reignite after trauma or something and there's a lot of people nowadays who are waking up to a power that they've never had before and that's been lost but when they go and they look into their history and their families, they find like, oh shit, there was a whole bunch of magic here. Like, her family was powerful at one point. Or my bloodline had power at one point that was lost forever. And that's why it's represented by Numite here. Numite is a very old stone, one of the oldest ones we've ever found. It helps to reconnect to past life contracts, highlighting karmic debris and abuse from power, helping those to not get entangled again. Again, if you've lost that connection and it's coming back, new might helps to represent that. Um, this also helps to teach respect for that energy, giving focus on a... Uh, on obligations and promises that may not have been made in this lifetime but by a family member a long long time ago and by reawakening into this energy that's where this wild magic sorcerer comes through and realizes this is what i have to do and new might brings them back into that and the last pair is the good old trickster represented by harlequin quartz and with the trickster, you have both the primal trickster and the divine trickster. The primal uses chaos to bring about change and facilitate that change by making others do what it wants them to do to bring forth the movement that the society or the time needs to, in order to do that. That's why it's got a rougher piece here not as pretty not as enjoyable whereas when the sacred trick the divine trickster they're the ones we see in the stories where gods or goddesses come down could be angels or anything and put somebody on a path that they weren't expecting giving them trials and tribulations to try and figure out who they are and where they're coming from where they're going and ultimately, as difficult it might be, it's leading them in the right direction no matter what. And the re that's with Harlequin Quartz, the name's kind of self-explanatory, right? 
um because even though it is a trickster a little bit chaotic it is universal love bringing the spiritual and physical worlds together and when that happens change happens chaos happens and if it's what you're needing it's where it's going to pull you to and it balances the polarities and meridians of the body anchoring and harmonizing with the etheric and subtle systems and the physical nervous system and we all know the tricksters in our lives we have them they could be some of our best friends honestly because they're going to be the ones who push you test you see if you're actually willing to go through and do these things that you say you're going to do Next is one of many pieces, because when you call upon them, you never know who's going to show up. And that is the extraterrestrials, the ETs, the people who have mastered this life and moved on into the next. And they are being represented by Tektite, Space Glass. I mean, what else would you use to represent an ascended master who has moved on? I could use Moldavite, but I feel like that's a little too potent for something like this. And also costly. And obviously Tektite helps connect with um, extraterrestrial energies and extra dimensional knowledge. Um, balancing magnetic fields of the body and the polarities of the self, both masculine and feminine. And that's again why they're going to come into this ring because this is all about balance these energies here they all balance each other out this um with the uh shamans the tricksters the sorcerers you need both in order to have full achievement here i thought i was one short look at that Next, we're doing something that's probably going to shake up this energy a bit because it's, these numbers don't quite balance well to make a nice pretty looking grid, but they will do just fine. And what I'm going to be adding in here is a little bit of um, Labradorite just to help with the potency of the magic and protection that we're working with and when you're calling in a whole bunch of council members from all different areas of mastery you're going to need all the help you can get because next we're stepping into the true magicians as they as they like to call themselves the wizards now, wizards are the masters who have sought through study, who have become deeper with themselves through that study, and have found meaning, purpose, and enlightenment in it in a way that only they can achieve. And the wizards are very, very unique people. They are very potent and powerful, but also kind of single-minded. That's why there are eight of them, and each of, and they're being represented by Mystic Merlinite. I mean, there's nothing that is a wizard stone quite like some good Merlinite. And now this type of energy, since I don't know if we've worked with it before, but the Mystic Merlinite is, it balances complementaries, blending earthly spirit, earthly with the spiritual and accessing uh, the multidimensional. It's attuned to the four elements, holding shamanic wisdom, alchemistic knowledge, and the magics of the magician priests. Obviously. 
It's a powerful cleanser, reprogram, and ingrained with patterns in the mental and emotional blueprints. And again, with past lives, Akashic records, and bringing magic back into your life, especially if it's ever been taken from, which anyone who's done some past life work and you got into the trauma of being like energetically abused, that's where it all kind of comes in. Now it's going to get a little tricky because, well, this energy in itself has always been a tricky one for a lot of people to deal with because it leaves a bad taste in the mouth, but it's the priest. The priest is just as important of every one of these masters because the priest has given up their sense of oh i'm the most powerful thing in the world to another creature to another creator and through that they are also the ones who have the largest reach because their mastery is through teaching and, and absorbing the knowledge of others. And they are represented by quartz Merkabas. Because the Merkaba is a, it's essentially the star of David when you line it up just right, right there, look at that. And well, not too much really shows faith in religion with the Judeo-Christian religions. But thinking of that, that's why there are 12 all the way around. It is a little bit with the whole concept of the tribes of Israel, but also looking at like the major religions in the world that exist, like Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, Muslim, paganism of all different sorts. And like the list goes on. I'm not too familiar in all the different primary religions out there. But if you were to split it up, I guarantee there'd be close to about 12 sections or separations that kind of bring it all together. Yeah, I'm gonna shimmy things around you know how i do never keep it all the same while i'm working the labradorite's gotta be a little bit it makes more sense being in line with the magicians here so then i'm going to come and replace them with a little bit of copper because copper is just going to help to ground, conduct, and move this energy around because, god damn it, why not? Give this a little bit more oomph. Powerful Yadala. Let's just go and shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. And last but not least, the final mastered self is that of the ascended master, the one who has pulled together all of their individual pieces and parts and retrieved all of their soul back to themselves, represented here with Herkimer diamonds which is all soul retrieval. And the ascended self is the Buddha, the Jesus figure, the Muhammad figures. Anyone through folklore, myth, and legend who has achieved trueness of self 
through power of the self and divinity. And that's why Herkimer diamonds are both being used here and why they're going to be coming, mining up in between all of the Merkabas because almost all of the Merkabas follow an ascended master. A lot of times they refer to that master as a prophet, but it's the prophet who gives way the knowledge of the ascended master. And these are the most rare ones to find, especially in like more modern days because how many people have been traumatized or abused shattered and splintered in this lifetime alone not to mention all of the ones in the past and having to bring that energy back into themselves and heal it isn't exactly easy not everyone can do it not everyone should do it which is why they are one who is many. I need to get more. Yeah, this, all this energy here is very complex and complicated. But that's what happens when you're calling forth the council. The council is not an easy group of people to deal with. Everybody is basically, well, they're busy in their own right. They have very strong personalities. They tend not to always get along with each other. And that being said, you have to make sure that whichever council you are working with that people are a little synergistic. So you give them some assistance. You reach out to them, call them forth to set down their old bondages, hatreds, discretions, and move forth from there. I'm not fully sure what all of this, you know, calling of the council means, what it's going to lead to. I just know as I've had the desire to do something like this. Because we are coming into a time where we need to really bridge these separations we have. And to bridge them best is to have all those who are separated, usually by their own choice, or just by the way life has led them, to come together. Like we need everyone who has mastered themselves to collaborate and approach each other, to come together, to come to council come to ceremony and work together to bring about a change we are seeking as a whole that we just that we can feel coming in we all know this changes here but we're not fully grasping it and lastly we're going to come through we're gonna connect all these dots together. We're gonna use our ever popular fade in quartz, the silver thread that connects everything and works all together. We are using that thread to call this council to 
bring us together to set this energy, to set the stage. Because things are changing. We need to prepare for that change. We need to move forward for that change. And instead of fighting and bickering and arguing amongst each other about what's actually going to happen, when, why, or how, who's in, responsible for it, because none of that really matters, right? We are done casting blame. We are done pushing aside our, or pushing our fears and insecurities upon others, including ourselves. We need to bridge the gaps of our seclusion and become more cohesive and collective. Now, this isn't the collective such as like the collective consciousness. No, this is the collective of all those who want what's best for the the world around them, the people who follow them, those who seek to bring change and dedication into this world. We are trying to remove any attrition and discretion that is cause pain and turmoil. Now, with the way this is, you'd be like, oh, that looks pretty good, but also kind of empty. That's because what's next is we are adding in tools to this ceremony, to this council. You're calling forth on the winds, the wings of those above us. You're calling forth the tools forged in flame and dug of the earth. Sound and rhythm of all of our instruments coming together to create this coming song. And as you see, well, we got one thing missing. That's because that is the pipe which calls it all together. The pipe of, pipe of peace, the pipe of counsel, the pipe of ceremony, the earth, the fire and air, earth and water, all of the elements, all of the masteries. Come into this energy, gather together. Come and be part of us, be one with us. We need your guidance. We need your teachings. We need your wisdom. And we need your understanding. For what's coming, you can only prepare for 
if we are working together. And we can influence what that change is going to bring by working together. We can make it that positive change or negative change. We can make it disruptive on a level that shakes society where we can make it smooth, subtle, calm, not abrasive because we've gone through enough chaos. So let's remove the chaos, mitigate that pain in order to truly come through for ourselves and each other. We are going to bring and be the change we are seeking, that we desire, and that we will accomplish. And we don't do it alone, but in a group of people and strangers, beings we've never met, from all walks of life, places on this earth. And we are being whole because of it. Fill in any holes that need their gaps closed. So this council doesn't get unwanted attention, unwanted visitors, even though all are welcome. Not all who come have the same intentions. We can link our intentions together if we know what it is we truly seek. Are we the seekers? Are we the knowledge keepers? Are we missing anything of the self? What have we mastered in ourselves? What are we to master? It's the time comes into being. And with that, this is even very interesting and potent grid this full moon as we have it in this in this sign it's residing is in a place that won't be for a long time and therefore it is very significant in that it is calling the council it is bringing people together we have to ask ourselves why now what's coming, what do we need to do to prepare? So pay attention, listen to the world around you, and listen 
for those masters to call, to cry out, to sing together in song as they harmonize their wills together for something greater that we seek to create. Luckily, a lot of this energy is very grounded. At least they are separately. It's making sure that they stay grounded when they connect and meet. Because we know the discretions and the differences that priests can have. We know the egos and the cult that magicians and wizards report. We know the pride of the sorcerers. We know the solitude of the prophets and the priests. And if we can come together when it's most the time of need, then we can come and bring the change we all need. We ask the Earth Mother to call out to our children to give them a place to meet, a sacred realm and grounds in order to build the foundation of this council. We ask that the Great Spirit, the Sky Father, creator of this reality, the great dreamer, to send forth the message to bring all these masters together. And we call that the energies of the here and the now, the present moment, come forth so that as this meeting of elders is being called, it is already existing. We know who we are. We know whom we must connect to and who, where we must go. We just have to feel it within ourselves and get there. As this lunar cycle continues, keep in mind to listen for the council's call. If you hear it, if you feel it, do not hesitate and go. Achieve, feel, and become that mastered self in which you are meant to be. For the time is coming for the council to meet. And you must ask yourself if you will be ready to be the one at council. Or are you to be the one, one of the ones who receives it second hand from the council member. There's no shame in that either. For the magicians have students. The priests have disciples. The shamans have their tribes. 
sorcerers have their families. The witches have their covens. The prophets have their believers. The hermits have their seekers. The alchemist has their challengers. And the tricksters, well, they know what they have because they're the ones doing it. And they influence whomever they get their hands on because that is their role to initiate and bring that change. With that said, the council bell has rung. <laughs>